Congratulations, you've made a sale. You scanned the barcode on the sold item, handed it to your customer, and your perpetual inventory system did the rest. You'll now see an automatic update in two of your accounting records. One reflects the sale value of the inventory, and the other reflects the reduction in your inventory balance. Sales transactions are recorded using specific accounts in the journal and general ledger. These include accounts payable, accounts receivable, sales, inventory, and cost of goods sold. Let's take a closer look. How would a perpetual inventory system record a sale? Just like any journal or general ledger entry, each inventory transaction affects two accounts. However, within these transactions, there are two entries that must be put into both the journal and the general ledger. The first two entries are accounts receivable and sales. You'll see a debit in accounts receivable and a credit in sales. Because the perpetual inventory system is being used, you'll also see an entry for the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is debited and inventory is credited. Inventory returns from the customer also affect two accounts, sales returns and accounts receivable. You'll debit sales returns and credit accounts receivable. But because you're using the perpetual inventory system, you'll also see an entry for the cost of goods sold. Inventory is debited and cost of goods sold is credited. Inventory returned to the supplier will affect two accounts, accounts payable and inventory. In this case, you would debit accounts payable and credit inventory. Great work! You now know how to record sales entries using the perpetual inventory system. In accounting, accurate inventory record keeping impacts the costs reported for maintaining inventories. The next step will be to create the three main financial reports, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement.